they have decided to bring an act of parliament to overturn a finding of fact. And if we pass this bill, we are asserting as a matter of law that Rwanda is a safe country. I always fear, as time goes by in my career, echoes of the warnings that Quinton Hailsham used to give us all about the risks of moving towards an elected dictatorship. My Lords, uh, last year I listened to quite a lot of the debate on the Legal Migration Bill and contributed to it once or twice because I had difficulty making my mind up as to whether I was going to support it. Uh, and eventually, although I expressed my reservations about whether Rwanda was a suitable place, uh, I was persuaded that it, it was a good thing to support and I gave it my, my backing. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, in the sight of subsequent events, we now have this bill. And at the moment, having considered it carefully, I must say, I think uh, the details of this bill, or its main point, as in Clause 2, are a step too far from me. And I don't think I could possibly support this bill unless it is substantially amended uh, as it goes through this House. And we should urge the Commons uh, to revise it. Uh, my motive was, firstly, I do think it is necessary to have a credible and effective policy on illegal migration. It's a big problem. It's growing. It's small in relation to our total migration, but its symbolic effect on public opinion is very important. I think the public need to be reassured that we have control of immigration into this country. And if they think we have lost control, then that threatens a very nasty change in public attitudes caused by doubts. I think we should all be proud of the relatively strong, multicultural, multi-ethnic society we've created in this country, much more successfully than most other European countries. And I think that's going to be threatened by reactions to illegal immigration if it obviously starts to grow again and is under, out of control. I also thought that the only policy that I heard in the debates, either here or anywhere else so far, that really resembled a possible working policy was that of going using a safe third country, party country, to consider uh, the refugee status of applicants. Uh, I listened to debates here, most of which were legalisms, arguments about international law, uh, which I last studied for my postgraduate degree and I have never practiced. I thought some of them were legalisms. Uh, I did actually think uh, that the safe third country proposal, if you could find a safe country, third country, was worth a try and I continue to back it in principle. What happened was that that policy hit a brick wall when it got to the Supreme Court and it failed in the Supreme Court, not because any finding of international law that a policy of using a safe third country was in any way contrary to any convention, the Refugee Convention, the European Convention on Human Rights. Government was defeated on an issue of fact. Five Supreme Court judges considered the evidence which had been submitted to the High Court and uh, all five of them were persuaded that on that evidence, which they had heard arguments testing, Rwanda was not a safe country for this purpose, uh, particularly because of the risk of reform. And that brought the Rwanda aspect of the policy completely to a stop. Now, the government's reaction, which we're asked to improve, is quite startling to me. They have decided to bring an act of parliament to overturn a finding of fact made by the Supreme Court of this country. And if we pass this bill, we are asserting as a matter of law that Rwanda is a safe country for this purpose, that it is always going to be a safe country for this purpose until the law is changed. And the courts may not even consider any evidence brought before them to try to demonstrate that it's not a safe country. 
This is a very dangerous constitutional provision. Uh, I hope it will be challenged properly in the courts because uh, uh, we have an unwritten constitution, but it gets more and more important that we do make sure that the powers are in this country are controlled by some constitutional limits and are subject to the rule of law. Somebody has already said in this debate that Parliament apparently, in the intric claiming the sovereignty of Parliament, could play, claim that the colour black is the same as the colour white. All dogs are cats. More seriously, that someone who's been acquitted of a criminal charge is guilty of that criminal charge and should be returned to the courts for sentence. Where are the limits? I always fear, as time goes by in my career, echoes of the warnings that Quinton Hailsham used to give us all about the risks of moving towards an elected dictatorship in this country. And the sovereignty of Parliament has its limits, which are the limits of the rule of law, the separation of powers, and what ought to be the constitutional limits on any branch of government uh, in a, a, a liberal democratic society such as ours. The way this should be resolved is, the government says, the facts have changed. We're not hearing arguments testing those arguments. I'm meant to cast a vote as to whether Rwanda is safe, and I've received an email. The text of the government's treaty and the explanatory notes. I do not have the expertise on Rwanda that the Bishop of Dumaran has just uh, demonstrated. <laughs> I've never been there. I know it's been a one-man dictatorship for over 20 years that we sometimes give refugee status here to people fleeing persecution in, in Rwanda, and indeed that it has, not as bad as some African countries, but has a rather dodgy record on human rights in various respects. I'm not surprised by the judgment. But the government says things have changed, but I have no means of testing that, and I agree with all those who've said. Change is subject to the Rwandans actually complying with the treaty, to the training being effective. The change on the ground reaching the retired standard, required standard and periodic checks being made of that. And, and that is not what Clause 2 is actually setting out and which we're asked to approve. So I do hope that we consider this bill with very particular care I'm probably going to be attracted to support some pretty startling uh, amendments which go to some of the main purposes in the bill. I do think if the government wishes to demonstrate the facts have changed, then it, some means should be found of going back to the court, facing another challenge, having a proper hearing of up-to-date evidence and in the light of demonstrated improvement in the situation of Rwanda, getting a fresh judgment if necessary from the Supreme Court. Meanwhile, search for other safe countries. Don't vote for the Liberal Amendment today, because as Lord Blunkett has said, uh, although I'd love to see the Conservative Party got out of this particular mess, the main effect of that would be to get the government out of the hole that it's dug for itself. They have absolutely based far too much on this Rwandan policy, putting it at the heart of their political uh, ambitions for the election, to be able to turn around and say they would have stopped the boats, but the unelected House of Commons and the Liberal Democrats and the Metropolitan Elite stopped them will be a save this government from what I think are its follies in crashing on with this particular policy in this way, and I hope we won't fall into that trap, at least in our proceedings.